I want to start us off with prayer for tonight. We're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we do love you and thank you, and we just praise you and honor you for who you are. And Lord, we just ask to allow the Holy Spirit to have full control of, of tonight. And uh, Lord, as we just are reminded of things, um, Lord, I just ask that you would uh, help us remember those throughout the week and uh, allow the Holy Spirit to have full control. Or too often we want to be in control, but Lord, we know that you are in full control of everything. No matter what's going on around us, we don't have to worry. We know you are in full control. Lord, again, I just ask that you bless your word. Lord, may you get glory and honor and praise for everything that's said and done. In your precious name we pray. Amen. So, how many of you have ever noticed, and this could be just me, so don't take this the wrong way, I'm talking about myself, but you realize when you come to church, you really didn't learn anything new, you just remind us stuff you already knew that you had forgot or quit doing. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking at tonight is, most of this stuff I'm getting ready to tell you, you probably already know. But you may not be doing it or allowing it to happen. And because, honestly, sometimes we get busy or we get, we get to doing things and, and, or we don't remember. And, and, and the older I get, my memory's not that great anymore. So I have to write everything down. So, but anyway, that's something that, that I'm noticing a lot. Um, I'll hear Brother Mike say something. I'm like, wow, that... I knew that, but that was a great reminder that I need to remember. And then I leave, and sometimes I don't remember it. So that, that's where we're at tonight, is I want to talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit. Um, a lot of times, the words that are used for the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, in the Hebrew is raka, and then in the Greek it's pneuma. And we kind of get the understanding of what pneuma is, pneumatic, air kind of thing, so we think of air. We think of breath, we think of uh, a wind, that kind of stuff. So that's what a lot of the translations will see, you'll see, either breath uh, or something along those lines. But they all fit what the Holy Spirit does, because the Holy Spirit is kind of like air, is it not? Can't see it, but have you ever seen the after effects of a hurricane or a tornado? Pretty powerful. Same thing with the Holy Spirit. If we allow him to work in us, there is nothing we can't accomplish. It's all him. But what does the Holy Spirit really do? Well, he brings glory to Christ. And we'll look at some passages on that. But uh, a lot of times, we have to understand that he wants to work in us. He wants to help us. And he's here for us. Jesus actually said in uh, John 14, he's like, I, I'm going to go away, but it's good for you. And then we're going to see it again in, in, verse, uh, in chapter 16. But why was it good? Can you guys understand why it was good for Jesus to go away and, and send the Holy Spirit to us? Well, Holy Spirit is here in every one of you. If you are saved, he's in you. Christ wasn't in the disciples. He was with the disciples. But the Holy Spirit's in each one of us. Now, how can that be? Don't ask because I don't know. But it's awesome that uh, the Bible tells me it, and I believe it. And I can tell when the Holy Spirit is on me. I can tell when it's there helping me. Because a lot of times, when I get up to talk to somebody or I'm doing something, and after it's done, I'm like, wow, that, that was awesome because that wasn't me. That had to be the Holy Spirit in me. But we have to allow him to have control. If we don't allow him to have control, who's in control? We are. Who would you rather have in control? Me or the Holy Spirit? I'll take the Holy Spirit every time. But, unfortunately, we are, have a free will, right? We have the free will to sin. We have the Holy Spirit in us. We do not have to sin. Once we're saved, we do not ever have to sin again. But we choose to oftentimes. We quench the Holy Spirit and do not allow Him to do His work. Because I guarantee you, when you get ready to sin, there is something there telling you, hey, that's not right. You shouldn't be doing that. But we do it anyway. 
We have to allow the Holy Spirit to have full control. Now, in, in John 14, it, it does talk to us about that he's going to go away and send the helper. That's another term that Jesus used, the helper. I like helpers. When I'm doing something, if somebody wants to come alongside me, sure, come on, let's go. I'm, I'm, I'm all about helpers. In 15, you know, Jesus talks, you know, talks about being in the vine. So we, a lot of people know John 15 about the vine. I have to be, abide in him. But at the very end, he warns us that we're going to be persecuted. But he also tells us that he's going to send a helper. So if when we're persecuted, if we allow the Holy Spirit to get us through that, that's awesome. We don't have to do it alone. How many people like doing things by themselves? Now, there are some people that like doing things by themselves. Don't get me wrong. But I always like to have somebody there, especially if they're bigger, stronger, and actually know more than me. It's awesome. It means I don't have to do as much, right? Not necessarily. Because what I do at work is when I know something a lot better than somebody else and they want to learn, what's the best way to learn? Go ahead and do. I'll stand here and watch. But the Holy Spirit is there to help us in everything we do. Not just spiritual things, but everything that we do. You know, one of the things that I realized when I got saved, I had been reading the Bible. I mean, honestly, that's how I got saved, because I was reading the Bible and realized I was lost. Realized it was Jesus Christ who died for me. I realized that. That's how I got saved. But do you know what, how, what happened when, once I got saved and the Holy Spirit came in? Man, some of the stories I read actually made sense. I actually, wow, that, that's impressive. Singing songs that I had sung who knows how many times. Oh, my word. I understand what that means. How did I, under, how did I magically understand what God's Word is telling me, and how, what those words of those songs meant. It was the Holy Spirit revealing that to me. I can read this thing. I've read the Bible so many times, but yet when I read something, I'm like, wow, I never really realized that. I never look at it that way. Who is that? That's the Holy Spirit helping me learn. So that's one of the big things that the Holy Spirit does for us. It gives us truth. Right? So turn with me to John uh, 16. John 16. Now the first few verses, Jesus is um, talking about being sent out of the synagogues and, you know, they're going to persecute you because they persecuted me. And then in verse 5 it says, But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me where... Are your, where are you going? But because I have said these things, your sorrow, you, because I've said, said these things to you, sorrowful has, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin couple of things. The Spirit is not it. The Spirit is He. It is a person of the Trinity. A lot of people don't get that. It is a person of the Trinity. Has different roles, but they are still God. All three. And again, a lot of people don't, they're like, they can't comprehend that. And I'll be honest, it's hard to wrap your heads around. It really is. But the Bible tells me, and I believe it. I, I can't fully understand it, but I, I, get the, I get the idea of it. And so Jesus is telling them, I really need to go. Because if I don't go, the Holy Spirit will not come. But if I do go, I promise and I guarantee you, you can't prove to me that any of the promises that happen in here are not true. Because every one are true. 
And I know that. How do I know that? Because the Holy Spirit is telling me. I read this Bible a lot before I was saved. And it meant nothing. But the Holy Spirit made it alive. And I fully understand things that I never got before. We have got to make sure we are allowing the Holy Spirit free reign. What does that mean? Get me out of the way. I am my biggest obstacle. I really am. A lot of times, I make things harder than they need to be. I am very self-sufficient. I can do all things. Wait a minute, what's the rest of that verse, though? Too often, it's I can do all things. I mean, look, look where I'm at in my career. Look what I've done. Look what, no, has nothing to do with me. It's all about the Holy Spirit in me that allows me to do the things I've done. How do I understand how to make a computer work? Not logical, most people don't think. But God's given me talents that I can use. Now, if I sit here and take all the credit, I've already got my reward. But I can't take the credit because I fully understand because the Holy Spirit is in me that I am actually nothing. Because if I look at myself compared to Christ, I really am nothing. But He loves me. This I know because the Bible tells me so, so does the Holy Spirit. You cannot take away my salvation. You can't convince me that I'm not saved. Because I know I'm saved because the Spirit is in me and tells me so. Now, do some people have some doubts every now and then? Oh yeah, Satan will try to plant doubts. But that's why the Holy Spirit is there to prove to you, did you believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for you? Yes. Do you understand that His blood is paid for your sin? Yes. Then you're saved. It's, it's not rocket science, which is a good thing. It's pretty simple. But what else does the Holy Spirit do? Well, look back in verse 8. In verse 8 it says, And when He has come, and keep reminding myself, He, when He has come, He will convict. It's that third person. Remember that. Not just another thing, that spiritual thing that you have. It is the third person of the Trinity. But he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So what's one of the main things the Holy Spirit does? Is convict you. Convicts lost people. I know most of you know, but I had a postcard sent to me telling me the road to hell is paved with good intentions and you're on it. Now, did that get me saved? No. No. Did it make me start looking? Sure. But what convicted me? The Holy Spirit. When I started reading God's Word, the Holy Spirit convicted me. It wasn't the individual that sent the card. It wasn't the card. It was, it was the Holy Spirit that got a hold of me. And it was the Holy Spirit that got a hold of each one of you that are saved. So the Holy Spirit is vital. One of the things we need to be praying for is that the Holy Spirit isn't working in whoever we're getting ready to talk to. Because we are not the ones that are going to get people saved. It is not our job to convict people. Although some people would like to. Oh, do you know what you're doing? That's just totally wrong. You know that's against the Bible, right? You, you can't be doing that kind of stuff. That's not our job. Our job is to tell them that God loves them, that God's there for them, and yes, they are probably a sinner, and they need redemption. But it's the Holy Spirit's job to convict them, not us. we got to make sure that the Holy Spirit gets to do His job and we don't try to take it away from Him. In verse 9 it says, Of sin because they do not believe in Me. 
What is the biggest sin that you will ever commit? Saying Jesus Christ is not the Son of God. You go down that road, that's hell is where you're headed. Plain and simple. And then it says, of righteousness and of judgment. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you will see me no more. We don't have to live by the law anymore. We live by grace. Because the law is not going to save us. What is the law? For? Is it the law still valid? Yes. It tells me that I'm a sinner. That's exactly what the law tells me. The Ten Commandments? I've broken every one of them. Every single one of them. So we have to make sure it's not about us when we're talking to people. And of righteousness, because I go to my Father. And of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. Folks, Satan is defeated. We have nothing to worry about. Oh, now, is he powerful? Didn't say he wasn't. He's the prince of this air. He's the ruler of of the earth right now. But guess what? Remember who's in me, right? The Holy Spirit's in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Now, I'm not going to take the devil on. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I actually told some folks at work the other day, I've actually been confronted by a Satanist. Scared the life out of me. And rightfully so. I was not prepared. So I walked away. It's okay to walk away. But understand, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We can tell Satan to get behind us. I chose to get out and let him be behind me as I was walking away. We have power that you don't understand sometimes. I don't. But the big thing for us is we have to understand he is in control. I am a control freak. I like to be in control. If I'm going somewhere, I want to do the driving. If I'm working on a project, I kind of like to be in charge to make sure it's done right. When I'm witness to somebody, it's all about me and how I can get the information that I need to get to him. And I have to constantly tell myself, it's Christ in me. It is the Holy Spirit in me that has control, not me. And when I'm feeling out of control, I have to allow him to be in control. He is there for us. But he's there for, as in these three verses that we saw, he's there for lost people, right? That's what he was talking about. He's going to convict this world of sin. Look in verse 12. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth, and He will not speak on His own authority. But whatever He bears, he, whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you things to come. He will glorify Me, and He will take on what is Mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine, and therefore I say he will take of mine and declare it to you. He is truth. Now how many know in today's society there is no truth? Well, what's true for you is not really true for me. It, you know, it's, it's relative. Well, then that's not true. Because if it's true for you, it has to be true for me. Because if it's true, it's true. One plus one, last time I checked, 
was two. Now, if you tell me it's three, I think I can prove it that it's not. But how do I prove spiritual things? Well, it's easy. You allow the Holy Spirit to seat you. You allow the Holy Spirit to have control. You read God's Word where the truth is, and you understand what truth really is. The biggest thing with people that say there is no truth, they don't believe this. And if they don't believe this, all bets are off. So what do we have to do for those individuals when we're witnessing to them? Well, let me turn in the Bible and I'll show you what this says. I don't believe the Bible. What do you do? You start praying that the Holy Spirit will convict them and listen to you. And if that doesn't work, come back another time when the Holy Spirit is working in you. I've had a couple of guys at work that I that I worked with and I just knew this is the guy I need to be really working on. He'd at least go to church with me. The other guy didn't even want to hear anything. Several years will go by and I'm I'm really dealing with this one guy because I, I logically thinking that's where I need to be. The other guy had a boating accident, almost died. When I went and talked to him about Christ, he goes, why? Why wouldn't you ever talk to me about this before? That was a slap in the face by the Holy Spirit to me, saying, listen to me. I knew who to go to. You were doing your own thing. Yes, it was logical, and yes, you might have, but I was dealing with this other guy. You've got to listen to me. Too often we don't listen to the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit, He helps mature us too. Now, some people don't think I'm that mature. It's the way I act sometimes. However, spiritually speaking, I've matured a lot. And the reason I got to where I'm at is not because I'm smart. Because I listen and read what the Holy Spirit is telling me in the, in the verses. Like I said, I can read several times. I mean, you can go 50, 60 times, and then the next time you read it, it's something totally different. But you have to be open to that. You have to be open when you read. When I first got saved, the church I was in, there was a group of individuals that did not bring their Bible. And we didn't have it up on the screen either. Like tonight, notice, there is no. I, I did that on purpose, by the way. They did, oh, I, I, I've, I've read it all, I know. I, I'm, there's not going to be anything I don't know. Seriously? Really? We've got to allow the Holy, Word, Holy Spirit to teach us the Word of God. But He not only matures us, but how many times have you been fearful and then all of a sudden a peace comes over you and you can't explain it? What is that? The Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not afraid of too many things. There's a few. I don't like snakes at all. But I'm not scared. I'm, I'm not going to run away. I'm not as afraid of death. That, that bothers me none. Not going to run out in front of a truck. But I'm not afraid. Gives us, gives us comfort. I lost my mom. I was sad. The Holy Spirit comforted me. I know where she's at. If I didn't know, it'd be a little worse. But because I know, how do I know? Well, you don't know. I don't know if any of you are saved. I really don't. Not my job. So how do I know my mom was saved? That was easy. She got baptized. She was terrified of water. She wouldn't, one inch in the bathtub, and that was her bath. I, mean, I don't know how she took a bath in that. She got baptized. I know for a fact, because the Holy Spirit tells me so. I have that peace. I had some other loved ones that passed. I don't have the peace. So I know what the peace of the Spirit is like. 
because I've experienced it. Now, there's a couple of things that some people don't like. I don't drink anything that's got caffeine. Not against caffeine, just don't like anything that has caffeine. But as some of you that know me well enough, you probably wouldn't want to see me on caffeine. I, I'm a little hyper. I, I, I understand that. But the Holy Spirit can give us energy when we're down. The Holy Spirit can get us through something. Uh, there's no way I'm going to get through this. There's, there's just no way. Yeah, there is. The Holy Spirit can help you. It's not a cosmic force. It's not, you know, he's not some great energy, his great, you know, spirit up. You know. He is a person. Remember that. He is a person. But with that, how many knows Acts 1.8? Most of us know Acts 1.8, right? But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be a witness to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We get power. That word there is dunamis. That word there is where we get dynamite, dynamic. You know, we got power because he's in us. Don't forget, he is in us, all of us, each one of us. I remember uh, growing up, I actually took karate, watched a bunch of karate movies. It's pretty cheesy now, but I did watch several of them. And one of the ones came with the teacher having a glass of water and having a can of Coke. So this is you. And he starts pouring the Coke in. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. He goes, why? He goes, well, I don't want it mixed with water. All right, okay, so you have to empty yourself, and then you can pour the Coke in, right? Sometimes we need to empty ourselves and allow the Holy Spirit to fill us rather than what we have in us. Because by nature, I am not compassionate. By nature, I am a pretty selfish individual. But if I allow the Holy Spirit full control, I will be compassionate. I can help others, and I will enjoy doing it. Again, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to have full control. In Ephesians 1, 13, it says, In Him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. We are sealed. How are you getting to heaven? You're sealed with the Holy Spirit. That's how I know for a fact you, nothing's going to take me away from my salvation. Nothing can take it away. Because the Holy Spirit seals me. He's the one that has me in His grips. Nothing is going to take me from that. Nothing. There's a lot of stuff out there, and nothing can take me from that. That's amazing. So we can see the Holy Spirit is a relatable person. He helps us. We're going to sing a song here in a minute. At least a chorus. Most of you know it. Holy Spirit, fall on me. What does this, what's that other line say? Melt me. What's he do? He's melted my heart. I, was, I had a hard heart. He melted that. Mold me. He has made me into who I am today. I'm telling you, if you knew me back before I was saved, I wasn't that nice of a guy. But he's molded me. We want to be filled by him, but a lot of times that's where we stop. A lot of times we stop right there. If he'll melt me, mold me, and fill me, I'll be good to go. But what's that last word? What is the last word in that song? Use me. Folks, we are not here for our own accord. We are not in this place tonight just because it makes us feel good. We're to be used. So we need to allow the Holy Spirit to set up divine appointments and to tell us who he's working on so we can witness. Why does we have to witness? I don't know, because he told us to. Why he uses me, I have no clue. 
I wouldn't use me. But he does. And he uses us so other people can see who he truly is. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He died for me. And the Holy Spirit will convict people of that and will help us get them to where they can understand who Jesus Christ is. That's why we're on earth today. We are to bring him glory. Not us. Not about, well, I got to go work so I can make a living, so I can eat. And Yes, you do. But why are you here? What is the purpose of life? Isaiah 43, 7, we are created for his glory. That's why we're here. And how do we bring him glory? By allowing other people to see who Jesus Christ truly is. I'm going to pray for us, and then Brother Steve's going to come up, and we're going to sing, sing a couple of verses, or a couple of times the chorus. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, if there's any here that need to come and pray, just allow them, to, allow them to come or sit there, whatever they need to do, Lord. Allow the Holy Spirit to have full control tonight. Lord, I just ask that you would continue to be with them. Be with each and one of us, Lord. Lord, you've got a divine appointment this week for us. I don't know who mine's going to be, but I, I, will, I will not be surprised because I know you're working, I know you love me, and I know you're going to guide me to the person that I need to talk to. Lord, I just, again, I ask that you be with us, guide and direct us in everything that we do. Lord, no matter what, as this song's going to say, melt me, mold me, fill me, and then use us. Use each one of us this week so that you can get glory and honor for everything that we do. In your precious name we pray. Amen.